I guess with all that going on and all your travels, you never get bored. But <laughs> you've no. just told me that boredom is something that fascinates you. Absolutely. So as you know, I'm always working on about seven different things at once. And at the moment I have kind of two projects in particular that are really getting me excited. One of them turns out to be about the promise that mobile devices make to us. So I've been really struck, it's hard not to notice it walking around South by Southwest, but in lots of other places recently by all the mobile devices we carry around. So phones, smartphones, tablets, iPads, that whole sort of genre of stuff. And I was starting to think about what is it that they promise us, right? What's the thing that us owning it makes for us, right? And you know, it, you could sort of say phones are about making phone calls, but they're really not anymore. They're about all these other things. And I really got struck by the fact the promise all this stuff makes you is you're never going to be bored again. Yeah. You'll never be without something to do. Yeah. And of course, boredom is only possible when you have leisure, right? Because if all you have is work, bored isn't an option. You can be idle, yep. but you can't be bored. What about ennui? Is that, does that sort of... So, so similar, ennui comes into English through Oscar Wilde, but okay. it obviously been prevalent in France for a long time before yep. that, but doesn't have quite the same connotation. And there are words in a range of other languages that connote something similar, but boredom as an idea and as in some ways a practice is very much closely twinned to the Industrial Revolution. Mm. So of course, you know, the emergence of changing notions yeah. of work and other things make you know boredom really possible which for me then raises these interesting questions about is boredom making the leap into the information age with us from the industrial age is it what we've brought with us or is something else emerging around that that's about kind of information overload or this kind of sense of fragmented and fractured time so I'm really because I believe it or not much to my own horror I have now got on my nightstand Dickens and Heidegger wow. because it turns out Heidegger was the first person to theorize boredom so I am stuck now someone who is much too old to do this to be reading Heidegger and actually have to think about it. And of course, he sets his entire sort of treaties on, on boredom on a British train platform, which given the way I first studied mobile phones, makes perfectly good sense. And I imagine that, that there's also a new kind of boredom that's probably emerging now, which is, uh, I, I think I see a lot of people doing several different things on their mobile phone at the same time, and yet they do, they, they look totally disengaged from everything so is it a short attention span or I think there's something about changing notions of time stimulation but I, mean, I do think only becomes a more interesting term in that regard right than boredom so I think there's you know there's definitely something starting to happen here about what it means to have such a preponderance of choices to fill our time and the fact that work for many of us is no longer contained by either a place or a set of hours. I think there's some really interesting questions, research questions, which for me is always great, right? To go explore yeah. about changing notions of time, changing notions of attention and engagement and flow, which are things that philosophers and psychologists have been talking about for a long time, but I think are gonna kind of come into stark relief at the point where we have so many objects and so many apps and services to fill our time.